Hi there. My name is Emily. I am technical co-founder of Evidently. Today I'm going to walk you through the getting started tutorial to use the package. So let's just dive into it and go to GitHub page uh, of Evidently. Here you can see a lot of instructions. There are some visuals of what you can generate using Evidently. For example, here is the tests. Here is the preview for reports. But for now, we are going to just skip it and move to installing from Python. I need to tell that you can perfectly build Evidently from source code, but it's much easier to build it using Pipe. So I suggest just copy this command, go to terminal, paste it here and run. I already have Evidently installed, and as you can see, I'm using a virtual environment. I'm not insisting on it, but you know. So um, next step is to enable Jupyter and the extension because I would like to use my visuals inside of Jupyter Notebook, so I want to enable it. For doing this, just copy this command, uh, paste it to terminal, run it, and uh, it will suggest you to run one more command to enable extension. Let's do that. So you can see I'm running it. And now basically I have everything to start the getting started tutorial. Uh, if you do not have Jupyter installed, install it because we do not have it in our dependencies. So then let's just run Jupyter Notebook. And here it is. It opens in browser. So let's go to examples direct, uh, directory. Then if I'm not mistaken, it's in sample notebooks and just run getting started tutorial. So if you did not clone our repo, uh, it will be much easier for you to go to uh, our GitHub and to do that, or just download this particular example and uh, open it. We also have getting started tutorial available on Google Colab, so if you prefer to use that, just feel free to do that. So I, I'm running this example locally, and you can see, let me increase the size of uh, the example, so you can see that all those instructions are copied here, so we can read it from here and let's uh, import a couple of things. So this is needed to run evidently in Colab. So now we run it locally, I will just skip it and let's import a couple of libraries. I believe you know most of the libraries, pandas to work with the data, numpy, scikit-learn. So let me just comment on evidently parts. We are going to import column mapping. Uh, evidently can parse your datasets automatically, but if you need to specify a couple of columns, for example, if you have a couple of columns uh, which are categorical but encoded with digits, it makes sense to import column mapping and tell us explicitly that those columns are categorical. It will help us to understand your data better, to make better defaults and better choices when, for example, we select which drift detection method to use for your data. So use column mapping if there are something you want to tell specifically about your data. I'm going to build report. This is why I import report. Uh, we are going to play a couple of metrics and metric presets. This is why we import a couple of presets for a metric preset and all the metrics. Uh, and also together with reports, and evidently we have test suites. So I import test suite uh, and many tests and test presets. So let's run it. And I'm not a big fan of warnings. This is why I also uh, import warnings and just get rid of some uh, simple warnings. So that's it. Let's now load data. I will use California housing data. This is the standard data set from Scikit-learn. And uh, I prefer to use it um, as pandas data frame. This is why uh, I use as frame parameter here. So that's, that's my data frame. And um, I just want to use one column as a target function. Let it be mat house wall. Um, I just rename the column and uh, I want to have prediction because for some reports it makes sense to generate target and prediction in order to demonstrate how we can um, work with those columns. So I'm just going to copy my target and add some random uh, values to that. But if you want, you can build the machine learning model and generate some predictions. So that's how I simulate the prediction. 
And in order to keep things faster, my first sample will serve as the reference dataset and my second sample will serve as the current dataset in order to simulate production usage of our model. So that's it and let me just show you how it looks like. This is standard table data in Pandas data frame format. Each report consists of metrics. Metric is the first class citizens of Evidently. We have dozens of metrics in our library, and in order to make it easier to work with reports, we created something like very nice metric combinations. We called it metric preset. So let us start from that, because this is the fastest and simplest way to build a report, and we already imported data drift preset. Basically, this is the combinations of metrics, which allows you to calculate drift metric for each column of your dataset. So let us just create a report. We imported it as well. Uh, the only parameter we are going to specify in report is metrics, which is the list of metrics or metric presets. So here I just use data drift preset. And then when I created my report, I can use command run in order to run all the calculations. And here I can use my reference and current data and then just call report in order to see the result inside of Jupyter Notebook. So here it is. Uh, here I can observe um, the results of drift analysis. I can see that dataset drift is not detected because uh, I have 10 columns and actually uh, no columns is drifted. So that's it. You can go for each row in this table and observe how your data looks like. You can compare distributions and see that they are pretty much similar. So that's how we can build report using metric presets. As I mentioned, evidently contains a lot of metrics. So you can customize your report and build it from any metrics you like. I need to tell you that we have pretty nice description of our metrics in Evidently documentation. And here I just selected a couple of nice things. So this is the metrics to analyze column. First is column summary metric, and they select column A for rooms. Uh, second is quantile metric, and you can as easily see that you have some parameters in different metric. For example, here in quantile metric, you can specify what exact quantile you want to calculate. For example, here I used this one. And there is column drift metric. This is the metric to calculate data drift for your column. So that's how I created my report. Now I specifically tell uh, evidently that I need to calculate all of those three metrics. And again, I can run um, the calculations and see the report. Here it is. So now you see that your report consists from those three metrics. First is column summary, which contains a lot of statistics related to our columns. So here is the preview, and you can go for details and see uh, additional visualizations. Then you can see a quantile metric. Here is the value of quantile, which is equal to um, let's see, yeah, 4.47, right? And here is some visualization. And our final metric is data drift, and this metric looks pretty similar to what you had before in uh, data drift preset, right? But now it's calculated only for this selected column. So that's how you can generate report specifying the list of metrics. I need to say that Sometimes we need to calculate some metrics for a bunch of columns. And in this case, it wouldn't be really handy to uh, like write it explicitly for each column. And for simplifying this step, we created a helper function, which is, which is called generate column metrics. Here you can set the metric you want to calculate for different columns. If this metric has some parameters, you can specify it here in a dictionary. So name of parameter and the value and then a list of columns. For example, two columns, AF rooms and AF bedrooms. Here we go. And now you can see that this metric was calculated for AF rooms and AF bedrooms columns. Actually, all of these things you can combine together. So in parameter metrics, you can use single metrics, you can use this helper function, generate columns, and you can use presets. And let me draw your attention to we have special values for columns parameter 
in generate count metrics. For example, you can say here none, and it will tell us that you need to calculate this metric for all your numerical uh, counts. Is that nice? So let's do that and see what we have. We have the single metric for uh, eighth rooms. Yes. So then we have a lot of metrics calculated for all numerical columns because we just asked evidently to do that. And finally, let me move to the end of this report. We have data drift preset here. So now you can see that you can pretty easily customize your reports using helper functions, metrics and metric presets. And if you want, you can also uh, create your custom metric and add it here as well. In this case, your report would consist of your custom metrics, some metrics from Evidently package, and maybe presets and metrics you calculated with help of um, help your fun function generate column metrics. So let's move on. You saw that you can perfectly build report in HTML format and use it to analyze what has happened with your data. Sometimes, in order to have this metric results in your data pipelines and somehow operate with that, you might want to use a report in dictionary format. So let's do that. For doing this, just call method as dictionary as ticked. And that's what, we, what you will have. So you can see that all the metrics are dumped here in the um, string formats, right? So you can easily access any key, get any value, and operate on top of that. Sometimes that's very handy when you want to perform some additional calculations on top of what you just calculated. So go for it. For login purpose, you might want to have JSON. In this case, just call method JSON. Let me do that. Let's run. And you can easily see that this is the result of your report, but in JSON format. Very handy for login. Finally, I need to mention that all of those results can be easily saved as a files, and if you want to save the visual report, go for save HTML method, just specify the path and the name of your file, and same works for JSON. I'm not going to run it now, but if you want, just go for it. Finally, I want to demonstrate to you test suites because often we don't want just to calculate some metrics in order to get results, but we also have some expectations of what values we actually expect to see, right? And in this case, it's much better to calculate metric and then compare it against some thresholds or other conditions. Uh, luckily, and evidently, we also have it. And for doing this, you can run test suite in a standard report. So let's see how we can do that. And evidently we have a bunch of tests, so if we create test suite object and then specify parameter tests, we can use here a list of different tests. So let me just show you the idea. So here are some tests about the number of columns with missing values, number of rows with missing values, and tests related to column type types. You can see the whole list of tests in our docs. So after we specified the tests, you can call run command, very similar to reports, right? So here we pass our reference and current data, and let's see what we have. Here we are. Here is an HTML uh, test suite, and we can see a very nice summary of our test. So we can see that we had only seven tests, all were successful, and we can easily group our test here, for example, by status, it's all past test, or by test group, data integrity, data drift, and if you're interested, just open up and see what has happened. So we can see that there is seven features and not seven, ten features and no drift is detected. Cool, very stable data set. So let's move on. In order to save you some time, we created the suite presets, which helps you to start pretty quickly with the reasonable list of tests. For example, in order to assess model's quality before you got your ground truth, you can use no target performance test preset. For doing this, just specify a test preset and do not forget to uh, import it from Evidently. So um, you see that the syntax is very similar to tests. Just put it here in test list and go for uh, suit. So I'm going to call run command and suit in order to get 
my suit in HTML format. So we can see that this preset is pretty heavy. We have 29 tests. 26 from these 29 tests uh, were successful and three tests failed. So let's group our test by test status and analyze only failed tests. So we just click show here and see what tests uh, were failed. So that's share out of range value for three different columns. Let's open up the first one. We can see that we had some expectations and uh, one object was out of range. If it's only one object, it's up to you to um, either say that that's a problem and dig deeper uh, or just say that it's okay, right? So this visualization helps you to figure out what ex exactly went wrong uh, in your test and decide what to do next. Maybe run report in order to get some more information, right? So here it is. You can totally combine single tests and test presets together. Just list all of those tests and test presets in tests parameter here. If you run it, you will see that you have now uh, 31 tests, right? So 29 from presets and two uh, single tests. And uh, again, same three tests failed. And finally, let me show you, oh, pretty long list, how to use generate column tests method. The idea is very similar to generate column metrics, right? So this is the helper function that shows that helps you to run single tests for different columns. In order to do that, just uh, specify the test you want to apply for different columns and then specify the columns. Here again, I'm going to use the shortcut, specify all numerical columns with help uh, of num uh, word. So let me run my suit. Here we go. And you can see that, well, we generated successfully 10 tests and all of those tests passed. So for example, we can um, again uh, group it by test group and see that we had tests from data quality and data drift. That's how we can work with that. For tests, I believe it's even more important to use it in JSON format or as Python dictionary. So the same syntax works here. You can either call command as dict, and you can see that here is the summary of tests, or you can go, oh, that's a lot, right? You can go for JSON with help of command JSON. Here is the JSON format. Again, if you want to log it to some other systems, just go for JSON and then use this to log the results of your tests, right? And uh, in order to generate standalone files, go for save methods, either save HTML, either save JSON. Just specify the path to your file and file name and you will generate standalone files. That's it. Now I believe you can use Evidently and try to experiment with your customized test suites and reports.